MarthaLorraine.com. I'd like to welcome you to another tutorial today. It's fall of 2021 and the leaves are starting to turn beautiful colors and the sky is just so blue and um, just fall is my favorite season. So today's cards are going to feature a little bit of a fall theme, a little bit into winter too, but mostly I'm going to show you a technique of how to use the negative space of your die cuts. When you cut something out it's beautiful to use these lovely die cuts that stampin up features that coordinate with stamp sets but you can also use this negative space okay so i'm going to show you how to use those two together in some cards and um stay tuned to the very end because of course i show you lots of examples so if you would like to um, see more information on these projects and other projects you can go to my blog stampwithlorraine.com you can also find me on facebook under my stamp with lorraine page and you can also find several other tutorials right here on youtube once you're on my blog please sign up for my mailing list and I, we can stay in touch and if you need a stampin up demonstrator i'd love to be yours and help you out with your products and your crafting and your orders so stay tuned i hope you really enjoy this video and happy fall y'all Okay, so today we're doing some cards that make use of what's called negative space. When you die cut something, you're left with um, something that has the remains of what you die cut out, right? So, for instance, when I used the, um, the stitch leaves dies, I stamped a little sentiment there. This is what I was left with. And the stitch leaves dies have two parts to them. It has the outline you know, to just do the, the, the big part to outline. So if you wanted to stamp the leaves with the coordinating stamp, Love of Leaves, you can cut these out as a whole. Or, and or, <laughs> you could put the little stitch part in here. So this part doesn't cut. This is just something that embosses the stitching on there. So, um, well, it kind of cuts into it a little bit, but sort of like a cut and boss. It doesn't cut all the way through. So this is what you're left with when you have the little stitching part on there as well. So this is what was cut out. And so instead of just doing these on scrap paper, I did them actually on my card layer. All right, so that way we're going to make use of both pieces. Okay, so everything is used, nothing is wasted, and um, I'm gonna have some nice fall colors there. All right, so what I did was I took some fall colors, some pumpkin pie, daffodil delight, and Cajun craze. And I took my sponge daubers. I have one dedicated to yellows and one dedicated to oranges. So use the daffodil delight and use this one on both of those. And I considered where my openings were on my card front. And I just use my sponge, my um, brushes rather, to go over and add some color to the areas where those openings were. And I kept measuring, you know, just putting it over and see where I needed a little extra Cajun craze or a little lighter colors or a little darker colors. And I'm left with kind of like these little windows onto the colors. Okay, so then that's going to get layered behind. So this started out being four by five and a quarter. And the bottom layer is as well. But I'm going to just trim it down just about just a hair because I'm going to layer these together and then onto my card base, which is typically eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. So that's going to get layered onto there with some dimensional dots, but I wanted this part to stay to stay close. All right, so there are different ways that you can do this. You can glue it right back, right down, or we can put some dimensional dots behind here. And um, 
or we can glue this layer down and put the dimensionals behind this so it's raised a little bit. So I'm going to show you different ways and that's kind of neat because you get a little, when it's raised, you get a little bit of shadowing in there so it gives it even more depth, um, you know, to do that. So I'm going to be doing that on some of the other cards, but just to be um, a little quicker today, I'm just going to glue these, these down, glue this layer down onto that. But first I want to trim this just a little bit because I don't want too much of that edge showing, but I don't want it to hang over too much either. So with my trimmer, literally, I'm just going to take a hair off. And maybe not even an eighth, just a little sliver. Hey, it's tiny. And same thing off the top. The top. Okay, it's looking like I need a new blade on my trimmer because I'm getting a little bit of a rough edge there, but this isn't going to show. Um, when I'm doing a lot of bulk color cutting, I like to use my guillotine cutter. Okay, so just a teeny tiny edge off there. Now you can use your blending brushes, you can use sponge daubers to create your sh shading and different blends of colors underneath. Um, I'm going to show you some other options too. You can use cardstock, DSP, some texture. So, of course, you know me. I'll show you lots of different varieties. All right, so I'm going to glue that down together. Putting a little glue on the back here. I will put that on top. It's a good idea to use your silicone mat because if there was some glue slipping, seeping out a little bit, It'll go on the mat and not on your workspace because once the glue gets on there, it stays sticky. It's called multi-purpose glue because it's both a permanent and a temporary glue. So when you put something on when it's wet, it's a permanent glue. It will stay on and stick really, really well. If you put a little glue on something, put it aside and let it dry, it becomes a temporary glue. So it'll be, it will always be tacky. Um, so if you need it, um, something temporary just to hold you know until you want to glue it down completely then that's the way to go with that too okay so this can look lovely just as it is very simple but it, what we're going to do is we're going to use these die cuts and add them back onto the card so i'm going to just put them on here with a few dimensional dots just so they're um if this one goes here just so they're offset a little bit and yet some of those little windows are showing and it adds just a little bit more interest in the card. You can go either way. And then I took an extra one and added some color to it. And I'm gonna pop that one up right over here to bring that little bit of color in. Okay, so I'm going to glue these down. I'm gonna pop this one up with dimensional dots and I'm gonna be careful to put the glue just where it's going to connect over here because I don't want it actually adhering down into that little window. Okay. Almost like it's been on a hinge and kind of swung over a little bit. Okay, so the glue will go on this side. And now I'm going to put this one up with dimensionals. But first I'm going to put this onto here and I think I'm going to put some dimensionals on this as well. Okay, so here's the card all put together. So I was sort of going for a look of leaves cascading down, um, but then I think the leaves were a little bit too big to get that effect. So as it turned out, I'm a little unhappy with this white space in here. So I figured it needed a little embellishment. So of course I was trying out different things and um, sometimes it helped to just put them on there. So I was looking to maybe bring out a little of the black and because this is a very delicate font, I was looking, I didn't want a big ribbon. So I was looking at the Baker's twine, made a little bow. So I was thinking, well, maybe it could go here, but and that looks kind of cute, but I still thought it had a little too much white space there. So I thought, well, down here, 
maybe it just wasn't centered enough and it's okay but still then there's a lot of white space here so maybe if i had moved this sentiment over more it could have worked but then i said well maybe here that gives a nice bright effect the black against the yellows but again empty space so i said all right let's forget the twine for now and let's go on to maybe some um other kinds of embellishments now in choosing i said well i could go black or i can go with some of these metallic ones here so I'm looking through these are the black metallic dots i mean not metallic <laughs> the black matte dots that we have in the um, catalog now but coming out soon are these classic matte dots and these will be coming up in the next mini catalog here's a little sneak peek so they're very similar to the black ones down here you can see these are the same size but then you also have teeny tiny ones so you have large medium and um, small those are a little bit smaller than the ones on here so it gives you options you also have them in in gray and vanilla and white so lots of options love these dots they're just super sweet so i thought okay i could put the black dots around but that might be a little too too bold for the rest of the softness of the card so you're always trying things out try to put some things right on there and imagine what it would look like when i put these um metallic pearls these gold metallic pearls up against here i just kind of thought it really shone it, it picked up the yellows and the um as if this is glowing and these are glowing so i think i'm going to try that this kind of looks lovely the way it is but if you something is bothering you then you know give something else a try just kind of think it out a little bit work through it one thing that i also like to do is i take a picture take my phone out take a picture of the card with the little bow on there different places see what it would look like because by taking a picture you're a little bit removed from seeing it face to face and then even if you walk away go back look at the pictures you know five ten minutes later and see what your first impression is that always helps for me it kind of takes you a step away from your creation right in front of you so um let's try some of the gold dots now often i say to go in, th in three um so I want to think of how I want to use up this space. I would do one, two, three, um, but I'm also thinking maybe that's too much just at the top of the card. Maybe I need to spread out a few more. So keeping in odd numbers, five might be a good number, but again, I don't want them too close. I don't want it overwhelming. So I think I would want one here. One, two, three, four, and then maybe one down here just to bring some more of that down so i'm not sure if i'm going to like it but i'm going to give it a whirl because i am probably the one that's going to be the most critical if i give this to somebody they are not going to necessarily criticize because they'll just be happy to get a card so i'm using my take your pick tool i ended up with two there um and two three i'm going to put one here still thinking of that triangle shape and maybe one over here again you don't want things too much in line so if i put one here it's sort of in between creating that triangle there i'm going to bring it a little lower just a little bit so that i could put the other one here i don't know it might be a little too much but okay it is what it is fine um if i got my take my tick take my pick tool <laughs> out i could probably take some off there and you know try to rearrange a little bit um so i don't let's see if i just take this off and this maybe it will be fine with just the three up there kind of interesting to see now i left a little bit of glue there i could pick that off carefully and there we go so actually i do like that better and it's fine i thought it might be too much on top and not enough on the bottom so i think that's pretty the way it is the shine of that really picks up what looks like a shining in behind here all right so thanks for working that out with me i appreciate that 
All right, so then moving on, we are going to next take the large leaf from the stitched leaves and love of leaves. Okay, I'm taking the big maple leaf and I am taking the die cut right out of there. And I'm going to show you a little bit of how I did the blending in that other card. So taking my ink pad and my blending brushes, I already did a little bit of the Daffodil Delight and a little bit of the pumpkin pie. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the Cajun Craze. I like to keep my blending brushes right with my ink pad so that I don't get them mixed up and put a dark color on top of a light color. Going the other way around isn't quite a problem because the light will not show up so much on the dark. But the orange I do use for both of these, so I'm gonna make sure I just rub off um, any of the Cajun Craze if I go back to the pumpkin pie. Okay, so if you're not familiar with the blending brushes, you tap a little bit off because you don't want too strong of a um, an ink smudge on there. And I always start light and then press a little bit more as I go. Okay, just tap off. You don't want that initial um, blob of ink on there. Now I always use this back and see where I want the extra color. Look how nicely those, those blended in. I see maybe a little bit more can go up here. I'm being careful not to go around the border because I want that to stay white. So a little bit more up there maybe. Okay, let's see if I got that. Oh, yes, I did. All right, I think that kind of looks nice. I'm going to leave it just like that. I'm not going to go back to the other colors. Take your blending brush and just rub it off on your paper. And every once in a while, you can just run these underwater and they will rinse right off. But make sure you leave plenty of time for them to dry before you use them again. Okay, so now that we have that right there, um, I'm going to glue that down. Again, you can choose which layers you want elevated. So you want to think about where you want to put your dimensional dots. So I'm just going to glue this down. It's a little quicker and easier because of these little points. I kind of like to have a little bit of glue right in there. Just a touch. Make sure I hold those down. Okay, I always use very thin beads of glue, if you'd notice, because when you press it down onto your card, you don't want it to smush out. So again, going for that real clean and simple look, pushing down those points. Looks like I might have been able to get a little bit more on there. I'm just going to try to sneak some right in. Just a touch. And then hold that down. Okay. Well, I'll work on that later. <laughs> now, now I have my positive part. Here's the negative space with the color underneath, and I have the positive. I'm going to let that hang over this layer because I think that gives a little bit more dimension and interest there. And I could pop this up on dimensional dots, but I'm going to glue this one down also, but just in the lower parts of the leaf so that these can still kind of be up a little bit. They're not that delicate that I'm going to worry about them pulling, kind of like this. I will go back and sneak a little bit of glue in there. I might even put a little glue on my take your pick tool and just brush it underneath there and that can get in there. So I'm going to put this here. When it hangs off this layer, it gives you a little bit more dimension over here too. And it looks more like the leaf just kind of fell right on top of there. So I thought that was nice. So I'm going to also put a sentiment on, but I just took one of my scrap pieces of paper and I stamped the thank you from the same set, Love of Leaves. You have some nice sentiments on there, this nice tiny little script, very small and delicate. And I stamped that on just a piece of scrap paper and I hand cut it. And I purposely cut it at 
little bit wonky angles. I did not want to try to cut it straight. If I wanted it straight, I would use my trimmer and make sure it's very straight. What I didn't want it to look like was I tried to make it straight and it wasn't. So I purposely made big angles and um, so it was obvious that nobody could really think that's straight. So I wanted that in there. It gave a little bit more modern look. So because this is raised up on dimensionals, I didn't necessarily want all the rest of the things raised up. So I have different layers. You have your card base is one. You have the, um, the next layer here. You have another layer here. And then this will be up again a third time. So let me just glue that down real quick and we'll see the whole uh, finished product in just one second. Okay, look how pretty that is. Okay, love it. So like I said, you have one, two, three, four different levels of dimension coming up at you. Okay, so that's really lovely. So now another idea, instead of putting your ink color in the back, this one I used cardstock. And I put a layer of cardstock in the back. This is crushed curry, the Stampin' Up! color. And I had some of this left over. This is from the um, Hammered Metal 3D embossing folder. And I used the reverse side. This is more of the front side and this is the back side. If you've seen some of my other tutorials, you might remember seeing this card. A lot of people really liked that one where I used that same concept on this flap of the angled trifold card. And if you're interested in how to make that card and some others like it, you can look that up on YouTube as well. So that's the angled trifold card. So I had some of the pieces of that left over and I said, this reminds me of the veins of a leaf. So I laid my layer of crushed curry down and I positioned this onto that layer and then I raised up the white layer with dimensional dots. Just didn't use the positive part this time, just kept the negative part and drew in a little bit more of the black with the sentiment and the bow, the gingham bow, which I thought was adorable up there. And by putting two dots here, that kind of forms my triangle. Even though I don't have three of the same embellishments, it still gave me that triangle because I really didn't want a third dot. I just used one of those little mini dots from the new classic matte dot collection coming out in January. So um, another idea. So where the white layer is raised up, it gives more dimension inside there. So that's a, a really neat look, um, especially because you see it in person. So similar idea, just a very different kind of a look, right? So now I took that leaf again. I stamped it this time and I used the die cut and the um, the part that does the stitching. So it gives no, like a little perforation, okay? It's hard to say if it's embossed or it's cut. It's not cut as if it's gonna split and get cut out because it's just little dots like your needle went through on a sewing machine. So that's why it's called stitched. So just little perforations on there. So I stamped that and die cut it out. I stamped with pumpkin pie and die cut it and I ran it through with the uh, stitching. You can see that there, right? All right, so then I took a plain white piece of cardstock and I die cut a circle this time. So the leaf is going to fit over the circle. So not necessarily the same piece I cut out, but um, I'll save this for another time. And that's from the layered circles. That's the third largest ring. And I thought it would look really nice. The fall colors would look really nice on Sahara sand. Okay, so I thought that would look really nice. Nice fall colors, right? But when I put this over there, I didn't want just the plain cardstock showing through. It looked just a little too plain. I said, I need something that looks like texture or a small pattern inside there. So I looked through my stamp sets and I came up with the Artistically Inked stamp set. And this ink looking uh, stamp seemed to fit the bill. When I stamped tone on tone Sahara sand on the Sahara sand, it gave me that sort of marbly look or that smudge look or um, 
kind of just more of a textured look that I wanted behind the leaf. Okay, almost like the ground um, you know, and those earth tones when the leaves fall. So I just thought it would look really nice with the leaf on there like that. So we're going to glue down. You can see I just did an area that didn't extend the card layer, the top layer. So it just shows through the circle. Tied it with the black twine to bring in some of that black. You can see my mistake on the back. <laughs> Fold that over and we're going to just glue this part down and this is popped up with dimensional dot. So give me a moment. So again, you can think of where you want it. Of course, I've played around many times to see how I really want this to go. And I was thinking I wanted it this way. Now, you can overthink it. Sometimes just plop it down. Your first instinct is pretty good. Um, so I was thinking, well, this is kind of to the left. And I want to use up a little of the space to kind of balance out. The hello is here. I have a little, uh, maybe a half inch margin here. So if I put something over here, again, kind of, replicating that half inch margin it seems a little balanced also again this is a meticulous silly thing but when I tied this little knot this this ends of the string are kind of going in this angle so I thought well if I went the leaf that angle everything seems to be going in the same angle I wanted it to contrast so I thought I'd go this way and I still want some of that circle to show so you can decide how much of that you want to want to show or not all right, I went down just a little too close. So I'll put it here. And so there you go. All right, so you can overthink it or not. Sometimes I just said, okay, let's just plop this together and there it goes. But sometimes you want to think of a rhyme or reason. All right, so again, very natural, neutral looking card using that same die cut and a negative space this time where the circle was. And I'll save this for another project another day. Okay, moving on. This is a this is a scrap that made me think of doing this class today. So, um, of course, I've seen this technique plenty of places. But when I saw this, when I was making some Christmas cards for troops, I said, "All right, that's the technique we're doing this um, this week." So, um, I thought, "Oh, how nice it would be to have some." designer paper behind there, some Christmassy colors or some naturey colors. Um, now this was bigger than what I would put on a card layer. This is more than five and a half. So I said, I'll have to cut it down and only do two. So this is what I came up with. And I cut two of the uh, pine tree punch out of the white layer. And I backed it with designer series paper called Beauty of the Earth. And that has, um, it's double sided, of course. And you can see this is the back side, which we're not using. But I used the part that had some smudgy colors like the green trees. Oh, here's my extra piece. So this is, um, it comes 12 by 12, but this is a piece of it. I just kind of found the part that I wanted. So you have these little smudges that are, um, reminiscent of the trees in the background. So a watercolory look. So I found the part that I wanted and I positioned it and I cut the back layer just a tiny bit short. And then that's going to be the card layer. So then the pieces that I punched out of there, I ran through an embossing folder that is the Evergreen Forest 3D embossing folder. And it has, um, it's a nice big folder, so you can run a big piece of cardstock through there. It has, it might be hard to see, oh, there we go. Like a, it does look like a forest. There's some trees in the foreground and they go back and it's 3D because not all of the images are raised to the same degree. So I thought, well, how cool to put these pieces I cut out right in my folder, line them up with um, one of the vertical branches of the trees and put them both in there at the same time and run it through this the stamp and cut emboss machine and that's what we came up with i put some dimensionals on the back so that i can make my own little forest here decide how i want this to go i like to have different levels you know some high some low not necessarily all high medium and low I like to mix it up a little bit. So again, wiggling around and thinking how it's gonna go. So I have my hot, my 
maybe my highest one there, lowest one, a little higher, a little higher. So we can work that out. So we're also going to stamp a little sentiment. I'm going to do that in Mossy Meadow, which is a lot of the colors that are in here. And this is another um, uh, sentiment from Whimsical Trees. I'm going to move on to that stamp set in just a minute. It says, let your heart be light. Okay, now let's see if I can get it straight. I'm going to practice on my grid paper first just to see how it goes. All right, now I'm seeing that my mossy meadow might need more ink. My mossy meadow is very light. Let me ink that up. Okay, good opportunity to learn something. If you already know this, I apologize. Please hang in there for just a moment. This won't take but a minute. I take my um, ink refill and I'm going to squeeze some right across the ink pad. And of course, the middle is often where we use it the most, but I also will get some along the edge. Now these foam ink pads, you can see often the liquid just sits on top of there, not like the old ink pads that had the fabric on there and it just absorbed very quickly. So I take at the back of a plastic spoon, you can take like an old gift card or credit card, and I just kind of rub it around so that it works in there evenly. I don't want it just sitting on top there, getting too, too uh, gushy or too you know, too much ink and then just too much ink in one spot. You do want it to kind of get around into the ink pad. Okay, and then just wipe that off with a paper towel or a baby wipe. I keep some wipes nearby and we're done. So thanks for your patience waiting on that. Let's see how it looks now. I bet you'll see a big difference. You see down here? I'll do this one on the bottom. Ta-da! Okay, so I'm going to put this, looks good, you can always check underneath, a little bit there, well, these narrow stamps are tricky. Okay, I'm going to put this right here, keep your fingers crossed, ta-da, okay, not bad. This side, all right, so then we will put that on our base. We're going to put the trees on, take off the backings of the foam dots. Okay. And also, I didn't want them too symmetrical that they're perfectly lined up. I wanted some closer and some further away, and this one can be right over here. The foam dots are good for things that are embossed also because, especially something that's a 3D, it really has some um, raised areas. So when you're putting the glue on, the um, it's only going to stick to the raised areas. So when you have your foam dots, they are really sticky. They stick right onto there and they are definitely going to hold. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this one over a little more so they're randomly spaced, kind of like in a forest. Look how pretty that is. And all on um, the one card stock with one sheet of the DSP in the background. Okay, so that looks lovely as it is. And um, but I'm going to see what it might look like with another layer of the um, mossy meadow. Sometimes I say mellow moss, I'm sorry, but that's the color that we used to have. So I really do like that extra border there pulling in the green. And notice I left a teeny, 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 tiny border so it doesn't detract from my focal points. I always tell you to if something's not going to be seen let's punch it out because this is two layers it's white and the designer paper on the back it won't be seen i probably wouldn't do this if i had just the white on something darker because you might be able to see that through so i have my tailored tag punch here and i'm going to punch out a few of these and you know, i'm going to make it sort of like a little pinwheel I know I'm just going to need a tiny, tiny piece here, so I can get three out of here very easily. Use that for another project. 
and that will go on there like that. So let me glue that down very quickly. I'm going to put my glue on here so that it doesn't go through the holes when I put that layer on. Okay, oh, I got a little too close up there, but that's okay. That's all right, I'll wipe it off. And we're good to go. So like I said, that looks really nice that way, but let's just try one more thing. Let's see if we like having a little bit of white baker's twine. Just to tie around here. Okay, so my card base was typical eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. The white layer was my typical layer, which is four by five and a quarter. So the green layer, the mossy meadow, I went to um, the eighth of an inch. <laughs> so that way I have, um, I had five and um, three eighths by four and um, one eighth. So just add an extra eighth from the top layer. Look how pretty that is. I just love that with embossing there. Oh, it looks really, really sweet. Okay, so don't go away. We're not done yet. I told you, hang on. Hang on to your seats because we're flying here. All right, put those aside. And now I'm going to take the whims uh, whimsical trees and the die cuts with that. I'm using this die cut here because it reminds me of white snow um, falling on the on the pine tree. So that's the die that I use for the next few cards. And I'll just show you those very quickly. Um, I'm using the sentiments on here and I will be using this little polka dot on one of the cards. So I use each of the sentiments. Oh, there's Let Your Heart Be Light that I just used. So very quickly, I'll show you what you can do with this. Okay, so here is, let me get something dark so you can see underneath. Okay, I stepped my sentiment on there and I punched, uh, die cut rather, two of the trees out of my card front. Now, I took some of the blue pine branches from Beauty of the Earth designer series paper and we're going to put that behind. I stamped this in misty moonlight because it took uh, picked up some of the colors there. So this is going to get glued down in the back. And um, so actually, I think I will glue this down first onto my card base. Again, your standard card base size for US. Okay, this way I can center it on here. And then I can put the glue on the back. Again, you can see I had a little boo-boo boo there. It was a little crooked. So flip it over and use the other side. All right, so I'm going to lay that across just like that. And I think it looks beautiful just as is, very clean and plain and simple. So sweet, a very quick card. But if you wanna kick it up a notch or two, take that die cut that you already had. I put some dimensionals on the back. Now this was a little tricky because as you can see, there's some really small parts here. So mostly I use the mini dots on the thicker part of the tree where the snow is heaviest. And then I cut teeny tiny pieces and, and just kinda of place them wherever I could on the other side. So now this is going to do um, just nicely inside there, again, to give it a little bit more dimension. So give me a second. There are plenty of foam dots to remove the backing on here. Okay, so there we go. Now this tree is just gonna pop up right in the middle. Again, I didn't wanna make it real symmetrical. So I'm going to find a place where I'd like that to be. Um, I'd like to use some of the space in here. So, whoop, 
you know what it just got stuck down so I'm not going to argue with that I'm going to just let it be and it will be fine all right look how beautiful that is again that could look great just on its own um, if you wanted to kick it up a notch I would suggest using the silver and clear epoxy essentials and these were the clear. I'm just left with sort of a couple of diamond shapes and a couple of teardrop shapes. There were also circles. And here they are in the silver. And I want just a little bit of a shine here. Again, you have circles, diamonds, and teardrop shapes. I'm going to use my Take Your Pick tool. And I'm going to put some little diamonds on the tops of those trees as if they're stars. just to bring a little something into there. Like you said, you didn't have to do it. Just giving you suggestions if you want to pop it up one more notch. Okay, I will get that one a little more straight. Okay, and I'm gonna squeeze one right on there too. Okay, there, so you got little glistening stars on top of those trees. All right, just so keeping that nice, clean, subtle look. Okay, so this is kind of more of a soft look. If we wanted a little bit more whimsical look, then I would suggest this. And believe it or not, we're doing it in black and white. Yeah, black and white winter Christmas card. Now, who would have thought? I took a layer and I stamped with the dots that come with the um, whimsical trees. And I stamped around to places that I knew would fill in the trees like that for a little more whimsy, looking like maybe reverse snow. <laughs> Instead of white dots, we... Um, have the black dots on the white. So anyway, I just thought it looked kind of cute. Um, so this layer cut just a hair smaller than the top layer, whether you choose to do four and a quarter by, I mean, four by five and a quarter, or this one is three and three quarters by five. Because I have another layer here, we're going to layer that on black. And then we're going to layer that on the white. And we're going to raise this layer up on dimensionals and glue the Christmas tree, uh, the pine tree down flat. Okay, a lot easier than putting the dimensionals on there, but I just thought that was such a cute look. Okay, another clean and simple looking card. Okay, it might be a little hard to see the die cut layer on top in the camera, but. Um, maybe you'll see some pictures easier on my blog once I get that up. Okay, so one more, actually two, but one more of this style. Another thing to do on the back is I used some gold foil this time. So I had die cut those trees, stamped it with my sentiment, cut out a gold foil tree. And remember the card that I embossed the Christmas trees on? with the evergreen forest. This time I embossed the background. So that is going to lay on the back there and we have some nice dimension there. Isn't that beautiful? Very elegant. All right, so there we go. Now we're going to mat that on the white with a layer of gold. And of course the gold is not gonna be seen in the middle, so punch something out or die cut something out. So I use the largest rectangle in the Stitch So Sweetly collection of dies. Okay, since this is not going to be seen, I just could use a big die cut there. And guess what? I couldn't just leave it. I had to make another card that I'll show you. And that's the last one. So don't go away. Wait till you see it. 
Okay, with the multi-purpose glue, you have a little wiggle room to make sure you're straight. And then this is going to go on top of there for a more elegant look. So look at all these looks you have. You have the, your natural, your nature look, you have a whimsical look, and you have an elegant look all with the same layout. Okay. So there you go, all three right there. Very interesting how you can get those different feels with the same layout. So now using what I cut out of that layer and I had extra trees, nothing goes to waste around my house. There you go. I put one of the trees on that goal. I said, that looks beautiful, very classy and elegant. I had a piece of this gold ribbon just sitting on my desk. This is the... Um, gold shimmer ribbon and it it has a nice weight to it very satiny feel and that nice shimmer and thought that would look nice on there going for real glam here guys so um put that there stamped joy cut that out with the smallest label from stitch so sweetly and added some of the gilded gems down at the bottom for that real glamorous look so black and gold can't get more elegant than that right so there you go so those are from that design let me pull the others all out and we are done i think we did a lot today so thanks for hanging in there and seeing all the designs that we were able to get done today look at them all all with the same idea using that negative space and your die cuts okay so hop on over to my blog and sign up for my mailing list if you're interested and watch for more information um, on the measurements and the products used in these cards. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, everyone.